So it's easy to take our ears for granted and ear care just seems to be the furthest thing from our minds. For our 10 minutes to your health discussion this morning, we're exploring the topic how to take care of your ears. And with us is ENT specialist, uh, Dr. Gayan Chana. Good to see you, friend. Thank you. All the very best to you and yours for 2024. Well, Juan, everything good? So far, everything good. Yeah, ear, nose, and throat. But we're talking specifically about the ear. Right. Um, when you say take it for granted, we just... No worries, anything will happen to our ear because we can hear and we feel everything is good and stuff. We abuse it, man. We abuse, we abuse the ear in, in, in certain respects. We often forget that hearing is one of the most important sensory organs because even if you uh, go blind, etc., there still is a means of communication. So for safety reasons, for communication, for learning, even if you're in a classroom and the teacher writes on the on the blackboard, well, don't have blackboards anymore. But in my time, when there was a blackboard, and the teacher writes on the blackboard, there'll be more discussion in an auditory format than there'll be a visual format. Even in terms of safety, think about it, most alarms tend to be audible. I remember that um, I have a couple of patients who would be in a room and they went to the restroom and they came back and their office was empty and they're wondering why they, they were hearing impaired and they didn't realize that the fire alarm went off. Wow. So something as simple as that is quite important. So hearing is a really key part of our day-to-day -day existence. Yep, as a younger man, and we used to use the, the Q-tip and pretty much <laughs> here. And then when I got a little old, I was told that you shouldn't do that because no. the wax is good for your ear or something like the that. The wax is good. The wax has health benefits. The wax actually helps to prevent bacteria coming. So you're actually removing the thing that's preventing an ear infection. And the wax is also good because it prevents things from crawling into your ear. You know, when, when we were younger, we used to have this time when you're sweeping out a room and when you reach to the door, you open the door and the wind comes suddenly and pushes everything back in. Yeah. Well, to the ear, you're the wind because it's pushing the wax outside. And all of a sudden you come with this big Q-tip pushing it and pushing everything back into the ear canal. So you're actually doing the ear a disservice than you think you are really, you're not helping at all. And so, so any amount of wax, too much wax is not bad? Well, some persons will produce too much wax, but on average, most persons don't. If you leave the ear alone, let's say you go to somewhere where somebody doesn't use a Q-tip at all or can't help themselves, most of the time the ear will be completely empty because the ear is successful in pushing all the wax out if left alone. You think you're helping, but you're not. I always use the analogy, if you step into, into mud and then wipe your shoe off on the grass, have you cleaned up the mud? No, you haven't, your shoe simply got dirty. When you put the Q-tip in and you see wax in it, you're not cleaning up the wax, the Q-tip got dirty, that's all that there is. So, so you mustn't put, the, uh, you mustn't Zero. try to clean your ear at all? Zero, nothing, nothing goes into your ear canal. Nothing? You look, you look stunned, zero. Uh, yeah. Not Q-tip, not pen cover, not piece of stick, not hair pin, not, what, what else do people use? What do you use, Neville? <laughs> well, no, because I learned so I really don't use anything. You don't use but anything. Every now and again, I just feel like it's, it's heavy and I will kind of take a little Q-tip and, you know, but I, but I don't really do that because I, I learned. But before that, I would, uh, you know, clean out, clean out or think, or, or I'm thinking, that's what I'm doing. But I think that's, that's the that's easiest it. way to get an infection. Continuous Q-tip usage, not just that. When you use a Q-tip, it scars your ear canal. So prolonged Q-tip usage actually makes your ear canal narrower. And then person will come and say, you know, the Q-tip not fitting as much as it used to before. I didn't know that at all. <laughs> wow. Um, the other amazing thing, and I'm looking at that uh, picture on screen now, that you will go to a party, a stage show, mm -hmm. and you're right beside the biggest speaker ever making history. Mm -hmm. And you are there for nine hours I listen music. That mm -hmm. the most damage your eardrum. Yes. Yes. Um, noise pollution and noise-induced hearing loss is a real issue. As a matter of fact, I have a personal vendetta against the Vuvuzela. Yeah, man, yeah, man. I would like to find a man who invented it. And, and I think it's a travesty for it to be allowed, particularly at sports days, because then you wouldn't put a loaded gun into a child's hand, but you put a Vuvuzela and the sound that's emitted from a vuvuzela when tested is equal to a lawnmower and oftentimes a jet engine. That's how loud it is. Wow. And just three to five seconds of exposure can cause hearing loss. 
and you have these kids running around blowing, 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 and you may not see the effects of it then, but you will experience, or I, I can guarantee you will experience some hearing loss in the long run. But noise pollution and, and noise exposure um, can be avoided. You have to encourage protection of your ears, whether it's in a construction environment, whether it's in other places, or even in the studio like here, you must be aware of um, the volume that's being placed in your ear each time and take precaution because that can cause hearing loss in the long run. How do I know how loud is too loud? Well, well one, if you have pain, then by far, let's look at the extremities. If you have pain, then by far it's too loud. But however, the ear is very accommodative. So if you put a sound to it, it gradually adapts to it. Take for example, you've ever been in a room watching TV and someone steps in and says, turn on the TV, it's too loud. But you didn't realize it because you gradually adapted to it. So that's the danger with using a lot of earphones. And I see earphone phenomena becoming so widespread. Yep. If there's nobody to tell you it's too loud, then you may be having the noise too loud for too long and not realizing it. So that is a danger right there. And I, I strongly think that we should move away from that. Yep. And you, you, you said hearing loss a couple of times. Can I tell? I mean, because it not, you just go from I can't hear everything until I can't hear nothing at all. Well, I mean, maybe that is possible, but right. hearing loss would suggest that, you, you know, you, you kind of lean over like a little closer. Um, that, because it, that's know. when it's bad. But you're hearing, you can listen to sounds, they say, from this range to this range. But for conversation purposes, you only need this range. So you could have hearing loss at this end and the other end without it affecting you because most of the times the way we recognize hearing loss is you're in conversation. Sometimes you can get a, a warning sign where your ear starts making a sound, um, a loud, uh, high-pitched monotone, tinnitus often called. And you hear beep like when TV signed off back in the day. And that's another warning sign that you have indeed had some damage and to you your ear. you actually hear that? Yes, you do. It's more common than you realize, and it's one of the most disturbing things for patients when it actually comes on. Yeah. And it's very difficult to treat as well. Yeah, a lot of things I find get worse the older you get. Um, I'm finding that too now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm suggesting here that it happens just because you get it older. It's not that you're sick or anything like that. Is it normal to say, well, you're, you're hearing, you're, it, it is going to, get worse the older you get or, or not necessarily? It is expected to get worse because gradual wear and tear will affect all your organs and your, your, your hearing organ, your cochlea is no different. So it's expected to get worse. However, you may just assume that all the loss that you're experiencing in adulthood is simply because of aging when it could have been because of some of the damage that you did when you were younger you could have caused significant damage to your ears but not realize, because your, your ears would have the capacity to renew itself. It has, I don't want to use spirit tires as an example, we have spirit tires, but if somehow you utilize your spirit tires in the first part of the journey, then the end part of the journey, your tires are gonna rub down pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And that's when you have persons with significant hearing loss in the long run. Yeah, uh, presenters like myself, uh, most of us, we wear um, what we call a, an internal fallback, an IFB and I've been wearing this for like 30 years in the same ear. Um, they're not constantly speaking with me. But right. the producer needs to say something or the director, he will say this. So I will hear, is this, can this be a problem? It can be a problem and there, I mean, these days there are apps that you can actually download. Um, some international apps that you can download where you can actually have someone speak through your, your piece there and then put that against your device and it can tell you how many decibels you're getting out of it. And so you can say, all right, tell you what, I think we need to turn this down. And that can be a way that you can monitor your own hearing and the sound volume that is presented to your own ears. Is there a certain amount of decibels that we shouldn't be above or something like that? Normal conversation about 30 to 60 decibels. And for the decibel level, um, just to say it's not a percentage. So. 10 decibels is 10 to the sixth power, so that's 10, that's a million. That's a million in terms of volume. So when I say that particularly the Vuvuzela um, can go up to a, a, a jet engine, that's, that's 10 to the 12th power, well, so that's- Twice. Twice, right. no, not twice, that's, that's double, that's, that's yeah. not double, multiplied yeah, by yeah, each other. Yeah. But 30 to 60 decibel is a safe zone. 
And I've had many instances where I go into a room, I take out my phone, I use my app and I say, hang on. I didn't realize it, but this room is going at 100 decibels. This room is going at 90 decibels. And I say, you know what? Uh, I ain't gonna stay here too long. And I just leave. And that's one way of protecting yourself. Yeah. All right, um, we've already said don't use anything, but don't you clean your ear or you, what, you just clean that? You don't, you, what to do? You clean behind, you clean the ear canal with a rag, but nothing goes into your ear canal because you can, you can damage things. I've seen, I remember I had someone come by who had a Q-tip, which is another danger of the Q-tip, the cotton bud is right, left right. in the ear. And he had his friend try to rem remove it with a pair of pliers. Uh. And I thought to myself, he's either one of the most trusting, trusting friends I've ever met or something else. But um, I've seen the weird and the wonderful because you can poke a hole in your eardrum well. and um, you, want, you can even end up with permanent damage. I, 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 had a, I had another patient who was coming from Champs one year, jumped into a taxi, wanted to clean her ear, um, took out, what do you call it, a tail comb or something like that. Scratching her ear, boom, the taxi dropped into a pothole, boom. Oui. And that was oui. the end of that. Oui. So you can't always predict what's going to happen. I've heard it so many times. Somebody just sitting in a room and they say, oh, somebody came in and just pushed the door up against their hand or somebody bounced them. So it's best to leave it alone because when you lose it, you start to realize how much of a benefit it is. Yeah. And I suspect it does, when you, when you lose it, God forbid, if you do, hopefully you don't. It's not just one year, it, they, they both go, or it can be just one year. One can go. Um, if you have hearing loss that's more on one side than the other, it could mean that you're exposed to the noise more on one side. I see that, especially in persons who uh, utilize firearms, and so the, the gun, the rifle may be against one ear more than the other. Can you hold uh, it like, yeah. Uh, or maybe in yourself, we're always using one ear more like than this, the other. Yeah. So, th but if you don't have a specific reason to have asymmetrical hearing loss, then you really should have it investigated. But generally, due to age and other conditions that affect your blood supply, you would expect both sides to go down at the same time. Yeah. Final question from me, <laughs> sir. Um, is it natural to hear better from one ear? Both ears should be functioning equally. Equally. If one ear is better than the other, then that's a sign that you need to get it checked. But one thing that you can also, that, that you'll also realize when one ear is better than the other, you'll have difficulty with localizing sound if one ear is that much different than the other. You may step into a room and somebody calls you or something goes off and you're not quite sure if it's there or there. And you may say, all right, that's okay, but how is that dangerous? So one, I remember someone who was almost hit by a truck, stepped out in the car, heard a truck horn, thought it's coming from the right, looked to the right, didn't see the truck and stepped out. I remember my mom came and she was very tearful because uh, she had a child in the house, a child fell, was crying, and she couldn't tell where the child was. Mm -hmm. So asymmetrical hearing loss can result in problems with sound localization that can have safety issues, significant safety yeah. concerns. I did say a final question, well, I'm just saying something now, because why I ask, because I find that this is personal, mm -hmm. and I'll be like this, and somebody will say something, and then it's almost like I don't hear so wonderful, and I go, so? <laughs> and I feel I hear it better over this side for some reason. So. You need to give me a check now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to for another reason. <laughs> Thanks for coming, my friend. You're welcome. God bless you. You're the welcome. Uh, EMT specialist, uh, Dr. Guyan Chana. Ten minutes to your health. Um, we'll do it again next week, Thursday.